In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Tonight we gather here to conclude our mission, our four days talking about the presence and the peace of Christ in our lives. We come together to the Lord now to offer ourselves to him as we are, confident that every time we come to celebrate the Eucharist, the Lord gives us peace by returning us to ourselves. En esta santa noche en que celebramos la Eucaristía, sabemos que Cristo siempre está con nosotros. No pensemos en el futuro, tampoco pasado, sino en ese momento presente, demos gracias por todo lo que nos ha dado. Y en ese momento pongámonos en silencio pensando en nuestros pecados. Let's take a moment and thank God for the gifts that he has given us and ask forgiveness for all those things we've done that have disturbed our peace. Lord Jesus, you call us to be who we are and to be that perfectly well. Lord, have mercy. Cristo, nos has dicho que nuestra vacación es ofrecer nuestros dones a ti mismo. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the way to our peace. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Keep your family, O Lord, schooled always in good works, and so comfort them with your protection here as to lead them graciously to gifts on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lectura del libro del profeta Jeremías En aquellos días, los enemigos del profeta se dijeron entre sí Vengan, 
tendámosle un lazo a Jeremías, porque no les va a faltar doctrina al sacerdote, consejo al sabio, ni inspiración al profeta. Tengan, ataquémosle de palabra y no hagamos caso de sus oráculos. Jeremías le dijo entonces a Dios, Señor, atiéndeme, oye qué dicen mis adversarios. ¿Acaso se paga bien con el mal? Porque ellos han cavado una cosa para mí. Recuerda cómo he insistido ante ti, intercediendo a su favor para apartar de ellos tu cólera. Palabra del Señor.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and scourged and crucified and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left, in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. And when the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I could picture our mom doing the same thing as we hear in the gospel, right? My mom, Andrea, going to our boss, Ken McKenna, and saying, Father McKenna, how about my son sit at your right and at your left? So I could totally relate to this gospel. I could see my mom doing the same thing. It's interesting, the gospel starts out with Jesus saying once more, hey guys, we're headed to Jerusalem, and this is what's going to happen. I'm going to suffer, I'm going to die, but I'll be raised from the dead. In fact, in the Gospel, this is the third time he said this. So he said it a lot. And guess what? The apostles are still not thinking about it. No, oh, no, Jesus, that's not true. I know exactly what this, like, what this is like. In my physics class earlier this year, I was teaching, and the phrase that was important is this. I was trying to teach them, I said, the slope of this line is equal to the velocity of the object. I must have said that 50 times. The slope of this line is equal to the velocity of the object. And I said this maybe for a month. We did all these labs, we did all this graphing, all this kind of great stuff. And about a month into this, one of my students, he's sitting there, and I say it one more time, and he goes, huh? And he raises his hand and he says, Father, I get it. The slope of the line equals velocity. And then he says, why didn't you just tell us that? <laughs> you know, it's true that we have to hear things over and over and over again. You know, if we could hear something one time and get it, Gosh, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> I wouldn't be a teacher, being a priest. You would just preach once a year or so. It takes us a lot of times to hear something and to embrace it. It's the same with the apostles. They have to hear it again and again and again. And our God knows this. And that's why every week we return to this spot. We come back to this altar and we experience this sacrament in which, in which our Lord says, 
Come and touch my wounds. Put your hand in my side. Yeah, you're, you're, you're marked by wounds and dents and imperfections. But really what defines you is your goodness and your grace. What defines you is my mercy. Por los planos quisiera decir la verdad es que tenía tan ansio sobre ese retiro sobre la ansiedad. Porque era la primera vez que iba a predicar como así y dice, ay Señor, quiero hacer algo grande, quisiera ser lo mejor hombre. Yo sé, Señor, que eres más guapo que él y tan inteligente que él, pero también quiero más. Y por eso entiendo lo que dice la madre de los hijos de Zebedeo en el Evangelio de hoy. Porque ella tenía la misma edad que yo tenía. Esos dos hijos míos, no es suficiente que son discípulos de Jesús, no. Tampoco que son del club especial de Jesús, de los tres uh, hijos de Dios especial, no. Quiero que ellos sean los mejores que cuando todo el mundo lo ven, no hay ninguna duda que ellos sean especiales. Y ella pidió algo de Jesucristo. Y él le dijo, no. Y también que el derecho de dar a quien va a sentarme es el otro lado, no es el mío para conceder. Es de mi Padre. Que significa, en esta vida, yo estoy en el camino con ustedes. No enfrente de ustedes, no debajo de ustedes, como hablamos ayer, sino estoy en el camino con ustedes. Y déjalo, esa necesidad de tener más que lo que ya tienen ahora. I was recently at a uh, celebration for a priest. He was celebrating 25 years of ordination. And during his homily, he said this. Uh, he said, you know, people keep asking me if I knew what I know now, would I still be a priest? And he says, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> But then he goes on to say, this is just how life unfolds with us, right? If you think of a commitment in your life, a commitment that's changed your life, that you sacrificed for, it could be in a marriage, it could be, you know, a commitment when, when a student starts a new degree, it could be becoming a priest. And at the end of it, you look back and you think, if I knew what I know now, I don't know if I could have started. But you learn to sacrifice and you learn to give yourself over to this thing. I was just at um, someone's house last night for dinner. And uh, her son just got his license. And she said, I've been driving him to school. I've been driving him around for 16 years. <laughs> There it is. Something she might not have seen initially, right? Might not have recognized initially, and yet something that unfolded in her life, in her marriage, and as a mother. We hear in the gospel today, Right? This mother comes to Jesus and he says, You don't know what's coming next. Your sons are investing their life with me and in this message and in this kingdom. They don't know where it's going to take them. They don't know yet. But they will. And even in that midst of uncertainty which we find ourselves in, this is the place where Christ responds in the gospel and says, I know that you don't know what's coming next. But I am willing to give my life for you. I know you're uncertain. That's why I'm called to serve you. Había una vez que yo hablé con una pareja casada y la mujer estaba embarazada por segunda vez. Y me dijo, padre, hay problema. ¿Cuál? Yo amo tantísimo al primer bebé, ese gordocito. Tengo miedo de que cuando dé la luz a mi segundo bebé, no voy a amarlo tanto como el primero. No estoy seguro que tengo bastante amor. 
después del nacimiento de ese hijo y después del bautismo, y le dije, ¿cómo se va? Y me dijo, Padre, fue como un milagro. Yo descubrí que el amor que tengo por ese segundo hijo es tan grande que el amor que tengo por el primero. La verdad es que tengo más amor por los dos hijos ahora que yo tenía en el pasado por el primer hijo. El amor se multiplica en mi vida más que yo pensé. Y ese también es lo que Jesús nos da. Cuando Él dice hoy que Él que va a servir, que va a seguirme, va a servirme, eso es lo que significa. Que el camino de seguir a Jesucristo como discípulo significa que vamos a servir. Y la vida de servir no es un vida difícil. Puede ser, sí. Pero por ustedes que son padres con muchos niños, ya saben que es los niños que les dan la alegría de la vida y los cuentos. Y por ustedes niños que tienen padres y amigos, saben que cuando están con sus amigos, eso es cuando tienen la alegría. No estamos llamando a ser solos. Estamos llamando a ser una relación, lazados a nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Es una vida unido con Él. El amor que tenemos nosotros multiplica cuando servimos a Él por nuestro prójimo. And so we keep coming back again and again and again to our encounter with Christ, this offer of peace. In our lives, in this community, we come again and again and again to this altar. And we don't know where that offer of peace is going to take us. We don't know. And yet we hear from our God. We hear back again and again and again that I know you and you are mine. And in case you didn't get it the first 30 times, peace be with you. En el Evangelio esta noche, Jesús le pidió a Juan y a Santiago, ¿pueden beber el cáliz? Y ellos les, dijo, les dijeron, sí. ¿Cuál es el cáliz que Jesucristo bebió? El momento de ofrecerse a su Padre Todopoderoso. ¿Cuál es el cáliz que nosotros vamos a beber? Lo mismo. Esa oportunidad de ofrecernos como somos, con nuestros dones e imperfecciones, a Dios. Porque Dios no nos mira con enojo, nunca. Tampoco el Señor mira lo que hemos hecho en el pasado, no. Porque no existe Dios en, en el pasado, tampoco en el futuro. Dios está. En ese momento, está llamándonos a seguirlo en ese camino de la paz. May God be praised. Amen. We come before our God, knowing that the Lord continues to look on us with love and mercy, answering all that we ask of Him. That the church continues to follow Jesus' example in service to others. We pray to the Lord. Por los pueblos de toda la tierra, para que conserve en ellos la paz, roguemos al Señor. That we respond to God's mercy and grace, the love for all who He places in our path. We pray to the Lord. Por nosotros, para que reconozcamos la presencia del Señor y su paz en nuestras vidas, roguemos al Señor. Let the sick be blessed with the care and support that they need. We pray to the Lord. 
por todos los que murieron con la esperanza de la resurrección, para que los admita a gozar de su presencia, roguemos al Señor. Padre el Todopoderoso, escucha todas sus acciones de nosotros y también los que guardan en nuestros corazones. Por la intercesión de San Juan Numen, escuchen con según su santa voluntad. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song of preparation is number 661, The Servant Song, number 661. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, on the sacrificial gifts we offer you, and by this holy exchange undo the bonds of our sins through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. 
manifesting the covenant of your love. She dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus, our Lord, you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice, together we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. El mismo, la víspera de su pasión, mientras estaba a la mesa con sus discípulos, tomó pan, te dio gracias, lo partió y se lo dio diciendo, tomen y coman todos de él, porque esto es mi cuerpo que será entregado por ustedes. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Por eso, Padre de bondad, celebramos ahora el memorial de nuestra reconciliación y proclamamos la obra de tu amor. Cristo a tu Hijo, a través del sufrimiento y de la muerte en cruz, ha resucitado a la vida nueva y ha sido glorificado a tu derecha. Dirige tu marada, Padre Santo, sobre esta ofrenda. Es Jesucristo que se ofrece con su cuerpo y con su sangre. Y por ese sacrificio nos abre el camino hacia ti. Señor, Padre de Misericordia, derrama sobre nosotros el Espíritu del amor, el Espíritu de tu Hijo. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop and the order, whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and conquer.
Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in the communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Francis de Sales, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, forever. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. United as brothers and sisters, together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, todos en nuestro propio idioma, and we pray, Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santo. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia. Y conforme tu palabra, concede de la paz y la unidad, tú que vives y reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Y la paz del Señor esté con todos ustedes. En muy su espíritu. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
our first communion song is number 832. Let us break bread together. Number 832. Our second union song is number 811, Fonda Vida, number 811.
que ese sacramento que nos has dado, Señor, como prenda de inmortalidad, sea para nosotros una firme ayuda para alcanzar la salvación eterna. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord our God, that what you have given us as the pledge of immortality may work for our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. like to thank, on behalf of the whole parish, Father Joe and Father Mike for facilitating our Lenten mission. I believe this is the largest following that we have had since we began our Lenten mission tradition here at St. John Newman, and I can't help to think that it has something to do with our presenters. Not only did you share your deep love of God, but you shared your personal stories and you made us smile. We hope you always feel that St. John Newman is your home and return again often. I'd like to also thank, it takes a village to put on a mission, I'd also like to thank Father Don Heat, who every night behind the scenes was recording each, uh, each of the presentations. And we have a link on the website um, with every night except tonight. So I know I've had several comments, darn, I missed one or another night. You go on your uh, computer and listen again or listen for the first time to anything that you may have missed in the mission. I'd also like to thank our lectors, our Eucharistic ministers, our deacons, our musicians, and a few people from parish staff for everything that they did to help this um, mission be a success. Thank you also for all of you for coming to the mission every night and for making our parish a loving community. Be at peace. Now I know how the sons of Zebedee felt after that wonderful thank you. The Lord be with you. Incline and say, bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God that always returns us to ourselves come upon us this night. And we bless you in the nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. In closing, let us sing page 822. I am the bread of life. Yo soy el pan de vida. 822.